Well, hey guys, I'm wearing, <laughs> sorry about that. I'm wearing the La Roche-Posay Anthelos Melton Sunscreen Milk, the SPF 100. This is a chemical sunscreen that absorbs very quickly and doesn't leave a white cast. And it does not burn or sting around the eyelids whatsoever. I really enjoy this. It is shiny, 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 but that doesn't bother me whatsoever. Um, speaking of sunscreen, many of you have asked what my opinion is on the a uh, rather unconventional approach that Gwyneth Paltrow took to applying sunscreen in her I guess, skincare routine that she did with Vogue. Um, I recall she said, um, and I, I'm not, you know, I'm not a sort of head to toe slather of sunscreen, but quote, I'm not a head to toe sunscreen slatherer. It would have been nice if she had followed that up with some statements about like what she wears on her body is she wearing like sun protective clothing and that's why she doesn't use a lot of sunscreen from head to toe uh you know clothing is an option uh if you don't want to wear sunscreen on the body long sleeves long pants high necked things uh, that really can actually protect you quite well in fact probably better than sunscreen in the sense that it's not gonna rub off unless you <laughs> are apt to just like randomly take your clothes off outdoors um, yeah, clothing fabrics, depending on the weave and the type of fabric, uh, tight weave fabrics, cotton, spandex, actually block out UV quite well and are an option. Plus they also make UPF uh, 50 clothing. And I do suggest that wearing sun protective clothing on the body is actually probably a better option, provided it covers all sun exposed areas. So when she says, I'm not a head to toe slatherer, you know, you, you might jump at, at that right away. But if she, if she wore sun protective clothing and was only putting sunscreen like on her hands, exposed areas of the upper chest and whatnot, that would make sense. But then she goes in to show how she puts sunscreen on her face. I like to put some kind of on my nose and the area where the sun really hits. This is our new Goop Glow Lotion. And therein is where there's a bit of a knowledge gap. <laughs> she puts it on, I, she, she was like, I just like to put it on the most sun exposed areas, the areas of the face where the sun hits the most. And she went on to put it on just like, I don't know, kind of like you would put on makeup. <laughs> she put it like on her nose and like a little bit here and there, like a spot treatment, like treating a pimple. That is problematic. The face uh, and neck area and the ears, they are going to see a lot of UV exposure. You don't want to just selectively apply sunscreen to certain areas of the face because um, the, you know, you can't just stay fixed in one position and assume that the sun is only gonna hit on those positions. You're turning your face around, even if you wear a broad brimmed hat, which you should, by the way. A broad brimmed hat does provide a lot of, of protection, um, especially like the nose where a lot of sun hits the forehead. It really can offer a lot of protection. You should wear a broad brimmed hat. It can offer a lot of protection. That might be something that she does. I didn't, she didn't share with us. Um, anyways, but even if you wear the broad brimmed hat, what ends up, what, what happens is that sun is actually reflected off of surfaces like uh, the ground, cars, and it does end up hitting these areas of the face where you may not realize that you are getting UV exposure. So yeah, you don't wanna selectively apply sunscreen to just certain areas of the face. You wanna make sure that you apply it to all areas. And unfortunately, the majority of people uh, under apply sunscreen as is. So her message is problematic in that the idea that you don't need very much, we're already struggling to educate people on the fact that they need to apply more. And her video suggesting that you only need a little bit here and there is, is problematic because skin cancers around the eyelids, um, the ears, around the mouth, really common i mean all over the face skin cancers are really common not to mention i mean kind of presumably the reason most people are, are motivated to wear sunscreen is not only the skin cancer prevention piece but also the aesthetic piece uh, you are gonna have photo aging anywhere on the face where uv hits and it's gonna hit everywhere regardless of what you're doing and whatnot um so in summary 
I really wish that Vogue had paid attention. I'm surprised actually that they allowed that to be put on their website. Um, I don't know what it would be like to work with Gwyneth Paltrow, but presumably had, she had some sort of contract. I don't know if in her contract she was like, you cannot edit anything that I say or do. Uh, that seems unusual. And so I just find it odd that Vogue would not say, hey, that's not really the message that is appropriate to send. Why don't we just clip that out or something? I, I, yeah, I, I think that's, that's equally problematic that Vogue did not intervene and edit that out. I think she was promoting an SPF 30 sunscreen un was it unseen what what was it? Un Unsun. Unsun. Is sunscreen. This is a clean mineral sunscreen brand called Unsun. There's no such thing as dirty sunscreen. Uh, however, I feel so horrible for this Unsun sunscreen because I'm pretty sure their sales are gonna plummet. I'm not familiar with it, but SPF 30 mineral sunscreen. Mineral sunscreens tend to be less irritating than chemical sunscreens, although that's not always the case, but if you are looking for a sunscreen that's less likely to cause irritation, you could choose mineral. However, that doesn't make chemical dirty or bad or dangerous or harmful. It's a 30 SPF. You know, there are a lot of really harsh chemicals in conventional sunscreens. There are no, quote, harsh chemicals in sunscreens. They are safe. Uh, there is zero data to suggest that they are harmful to human health in any way, shape, or form. In fact, they are beneficial because they can, when used appropriately, protect against a sunburn and skin cancer. I really want to avoid um, that, you know, isn't certified by the EWG, and which is a great website, by the way, if you ever want to understand how clean a, um, a product is, you can go check that out. The Environmental Working Group is a lobbying group that likes to misrepresent science to make baseless claims against sunscreens and other personal care products. Uh, their statements are not rooted in science. They misrepresent small laboratory studies to promote their own agenda. I do not recommend the Environmental Working Group. Check out my video on why you should not go there. Um, low SPF as is. So, you know, she that little bit that she put on her nose and around her cheekbones or whatever, that's not a sufficient quantity to cover those surfaces. Uh, you actually need much more to get a, you know, a thick film to actually really cover those areas. So even if she was only treating certain areas of the face that she believes get sun exposure, you know, thinking that other areas don't, she's still grossly underapplied to those areas. She probably had at most an SPF of like three, five, given how she was applying it. Maybe one or two. Giving her the benefit of the doubt, which I know people are like, why would you ever give Gwyneth the benefit of the doubt? Not saying this is true. I'm just saying, objectively speaking, considering alternatives, perhaps she is ignorant when it comes to how much sunscreen you need to apply. Truthfully, the majority of people out there don't know how much you need to apply and whatnot. So maybe she truly is ignorant. And you would say like, oh, of course that's not true. You know, like she probably sees dermatologists, surely a dermatologist told her somewhere along the line how to apply sunscreen. But actually studies suggest that a majority of people, when they see a dermatologist, they don't get that educational piece of how to use sunscreen and the importance of it and how to apply it. Um, so I guess if anything, it's kind of reinforces that we could always be better at educating not only our patients, but the public about sun protection. So yeah, I mean, I don't know. Maybe, maybe she truly didn't know, but Vogue should know and they should have edited that out. Someone, you know, could have, could have educated her. The other option, the other likely thing is that she doesn't believe in sunscreen and doesn't actually wear it. And that little bit that she put on was solely for the purpose of promoting a product to sell to the audience. <laughs> um, a lot of people are sunscreen averse. They believe that it's harmful, that it's got toxic chemicals in it, that it's an endocrine disruptor, or that it causes vitamin D deficiency. And none of these things are true. They're just, uh, myths that are perpetuated by certain, yeah, these are ideas that certain groups perpetuate, like the clean green movement. It's very harmful, actually. The biggest risk of wearing sunscreen, there are, there are several risks, actually. One, you can develop a contact dermatitis to it. That happens. People either find them irritating or they actually develop an allergy, albeit rarely, 
to an ingredient. Many people think they're allergic to sunscreen, but it's not a true allergy, it's just an irritant reaction. So that can happen. The other problem with sunscreen that can arise and is you know, a true, th true risk is that you end up staying outside too long and getting too much sun exposure because you believe that you are protected. This is akin to, this is kind of akin to wearing a flame retardant vest and then jumping head first into a bonfire. <laughs> Probably not the best idea. Sunscreen is just one piece of the protective aspect, but a lot of people fail to realize that they need to do more things, like wear sun protective clothing, reapply it, not stay out too long. And so they inadvertently, because they are under the false belief that they are safe, they end up staying out too long and getting actually too much UV exposure as a result of simply applying the sunscreen. So that is another risk. But sunscreen is safe, it's not an endocrine disruptor. You know, there's no, there's no data to show that applying sunscreen results in endocrinologic problems or any kind of cancer. It actually is chemo preventative. It can reduce the burden of skin cancers. She, she does have a very pale skin type and light eyes and light hair. That is a risk factor for skin cancers. So she is one person in particular who of anyone needs to be super aggressive with her sun protection. She's, very, she's a skin type that is very likely to burn. And so I would hope that she would take better measures and precautions to protect her skin. The other possibility is that she believes that sunscreen blocks vitamin D. It does not. That has been shown, so yeah. Wish she had done better, I wish Vogue had done better. But a potential positive from all of this is that actually it leads people to be more proactive about putting sunscreen on and putting it on more. Kind of just wanting to be the opposite of Gwyneth. I have come to see that she is not well liked in, you know, amongst the pu public. People don't care for her and I, you know, to each their own as far as their opinion. I don't really keep up with her or anything like that, but people don't care for her probably because of some of her potentially dangerous messages that she has put out there in the past. And I do think that people have a lot of mistrust for anything that comes out of her mouth. So if anything, her showing people, hey, this is how I do it, maybe people will do the opposite uh, and will, will uh, you know, be more, conscientious with their sunscreen usage. Update on the coffee that I tried out last weekend. I'm still loving it. This is from Austin, the Greater Goods Coffee. I'm really loving it. The cherry does come through. Well, hey guys, I am on my way out to run errands. It's another beautiful day. Enjoying the spring weather that we're having and knock on whatever cars are made out of in the interior. I, uh, I'm not having allergies that are too, too bad. A little bit, but not bad. This is a time where there's a lot of pollen and I tend to be a little sneezy sniffly. Uh, so yeah, I reapplied a little sunscreen. Actually, as a matter of fact, uh, one sunscreen that I carry with me, I'm stopped here at a red light, by the way. Uh, one sun sunscreen I carry with me in my purse is this Isen Mommy. It's a chemical sunscreen, no fragrance. Let me put it in, let me actually put it in the frame. Um, I get it on Yes Style, and it's, like I said, free of fragrance, there's no cast, it's very moisturizing. It doesn't have any low molecular weight alcohols in it that some people find drying. Highly recommend it. And I've got my, my driving gloves on for a little extra hand protection. Uh, yeah, I get a, a lot of questions, you know, do I need to be wearing sunscreen indoors? I recommend doing that every day. Just wear sunscreen every day um, because there are multiple reasons to wear sunscreen indoors. First of all, um, UVA comes through window glass and that can contribute not only to photoaging, uh, destruction of collagen, skin cancer risk, and uh, it also drives things that, uh, a variety of different skin diseases like acne and worsens hyperpigmentation and you may be like well there are no windows in my house and blah 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 uh, also uh, indoor lighting can emit some some low amounts of UV that cumulatively over your lifetime uh, add up and probably do contribute to a certain extent to skin damage 
I know some people like to tally up the amount and be like, well, it's super low, but one of the things you have to bear in mind is that some issues in the skin are the result of cumulative lifetime exposure. So it's kind of about minimizing those risks. Um, so that's another reason. And then um, sunscreen is just, you know, a, a habit. Like, it, you know, if you if you go through a period of time where you're not wearing it, then you're just going to be out of the habit of putting it on. So that's, you know, kind of another behavioral reason to, to wear it every day. And then you may plan to be indoors all the time, but you never know when you're going to get called out uh, to go outside, stuck outside. It's nice to just already have sunscreen on. The behavioral piece is really important, though, because... Sunscreen is only as good as you are at wearing it, and uh, most people don't apply it enough, and that's why it fails. But again, like I've said in all my videos, you can't just rely on sunscreen when you're outside. You need to wear like, sun protective clothing. And it is really super important to protect your skin from the sun. I know people like like to gush on and on about vitamin D synthesis from the sun, but really people are failing to realize, I, I don't know if it's an educational thing or what, but truthfully, when it comes to vitamin D synthesis in the skin, you don't need very much UV exposure. And you really, there's really no amount of UV exposure from the sun that you can get that's not simultaneously gonna cause a lot of skin injury, including DNA mutations. Not only that, you know, one of the reasons why we don't get hypervitaminosis D from the sun is that UV actually will put the brakes on vitamin D synthesis. And part of what does that is UVA. And the majority of the ultraviolet radiation that comes from the sun is UVA. And we're exposed to pretty high doses of it. And it's only a select wavelength of UVB, the burning rays, that does the vitamin D synthesis thing. So, uh, you know, the UVA actually kind of negates some of that. Uh, not to mention the fact that many people don't have enough of the machinery in their skin to do the work. If you are a person of color, you know, a black person, you can lay out butt naked in the sun all day and the skin vitamin D synthesis is still going to be very little to none because the melanin in, in your skin blocks out the vitamin D activating rays. Um, so laying out in the sun just exposes you to more UVA, the seriously damaging rays. It doesn't do, you know, you're not getting, you're not going to get vitamin D. People who are older, their skin, with age, we, you know, the skin becomes thinner, um, the, epi the, the top layer of the skin becomes thinner, and we don't have as much, uh, very little of that vitamin D synthesis machinery. Um, and the other thing people comment on is, uh, well, wearing sunscreen doesn't that get in the way of vitamin D synthesis? It doesn't. And truthfully, sunscreens that have good UVA protection, like it, it appears, actually help your skin with the vitamin D synthesis uh, better. You know, help your skin make the vitamin D better. Because, as I said, the UVA, the, which is the majority of what comes from the sun, is UVA. is very, you know, a, sm a small proportion of ultraviolet radiation is actually UVB. And of that, only a tiny, tiny fraction is, is the wavelength that is necessary for for uh, vitamin D synthesis. So, I mean, if you look in the grand scheme of things, it's like putting, it's like getting a bowl of sugar and putting, putting a blueberry inside of it and being like, I need to, I need to eat this whole bowl of sugar to get some antioxidants. And you're like, a blueberry is like a minuscule fraction of this. Same same principle with ultraviolet radiation um, from the sun. You can get vitamin D from your diet um, and from supplements. Snap Kitchen. Snap Kitchen is like a local, not meal prep company, but they have prepared meals that you can buy. They have some vegan options. They're pretty good. I've had them a few times. Do you guys? There are a couple of com like businesses that are like that. There's one, My Fit Foods. 
the one near me went out of business and now I see they're opening another one. All right, I just exited the uh, post office and I got some cards from you all. Look how pretty this one is. Thank you so much. I love getting cards. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you so much. And we got one all the way from Australia. Oh, it's Easter. Thank you so much. It's a glittery one. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. Shiny, shiny, shiny. <laughs> I got you. I got you. All right. Thank you. Yeah, I almost walked out of there with someone else's package because they put a little slip in my um, in my box, and I went to retrieve the package. They gave me this box, and had I not looked at the address, I would have walked out with it. It was for someone else um, whose PO box had very similar numbers to mine. And the post office just, I guess, got them confused. <laughs> okay, I'm tempted to get this for my bed. It's only $20, a Sutton Place cooling throw. Um, this keeps you cool at night. Like, not even a foot in the door and I'm already, <laughs> I'm already tempted. Well, hey guys, I just got out of the shower uh, and does anyone else wear Christmas PJs like year round? <laughs> I do, but I think I'm going to, I did in fact purchase this cooling blanket. Cause last night I felt like I was getting a little hot in the middle of the night um, and I ended up kicking off my blankets and I'm thinking that this is going to be really good here in the summer. I always go back and forth in the summertime with my blankets because I get hot at night, but then with the air conditioning, if you don't have a blanket on or, you know, too few blankets, then it gets, it gets cold. I also got a um, three pack of the 32 degree black tees. These are my favorite, the 32 degree um, t-shirts. Speaking of good for hot weather, they are perfect. Like they don't, they're breathable. They're, they're kind of cooling. Like they live up to the name, 32 degree cool. They keep you cool. Um, and I just think they're really flattering. And so they were back in stock. I got a pack of those. Oh. Speaking of Costco, let me show you guys. Remember last week I got that under the sink organizer thing? Well, today I finally set it up. <laughs> it takes me a while to do things. I'll show you guys how it came out. All right, it looks so much better. I should have filmed it before, but I, I didn't. Um, uh, here it is, and you had to assemble it. It's relatively sturdy, um, and I like that it's got that handle. It's pretty sturdy and it was easy to assemble. It's got this little like thing that you can pop off, little container, and then this divider you can adjust. See, you can put it there or there so you can kind of adjust how things go. But I just have some disinfecting wipes, some replenishments of hand soap, uh, garbage bags, my Dawn power wash dish spray. I have to say, I am, I have come to love this. It does a really good job cleaning the sink at least. I've got some dishwashing liquid there and I have these, I also have these cookware, I also have these cookware and bakeware cleaner pods, my dis garbage disposal cleaning pods. Yeah, just a little, this is, this is to run through your washing machine and to clean it and then this is one to run through your dishwasher. I kind of want to try that sometime. I bought it impulsively and haven't used it. I store my dishwashing pods in this container. I got it at Kroger. It's kind of like for, it's for I think like cereal or grains or something. Um, but uh, yeah, it's by this brand Snapware. And then I've just got some white vinegar. I always use reusable grocery bags, but with the curbside pickup I've got a few times, they do the plastic bags, so I've just saved them, and I stuffed them in an old uh, trash can under there. And then I've got some 
I've got some paper towels. This little thing is for my um, steam mop to pour the w distilled water into the steam mop. I keep it under there. Oops. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Looks much better. Fire, fire extinguisher there. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with how that came out. Uh, it's nice to have it picked up. I need to set up the uh, those little stacking trays that I got. Next, I need to set up these uh, shelf organizers that I bought too inside my cabinets, but I'm not gonna do that right now. <laughs> I am, I'm gonna wrap up the vlog here uh, and uh, relax a little while. Thank you guys for coming along with me to Costco. I'm gonna wrap it up as the wrap queen. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.